Welcome to Shadow of Truth, and today is Monday, November the 14th, 2016, and your hosts are Dave Pranzler from InvestmentResearchDynamics.com and Rory Hall from TheDailyCoin.org. What's going on, Dave? Well, after after a long, thoughtful weekend, um, I'm feeling really good that Hillary's not the president-elect, but I'm not feeling really good about the fact that Trump is the president-elect. And I'm, <laughs> I think we can we can dissect that comment as, as you know in today's show. I think so, and 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 probably this should be our our last go round with the uh, election, and just let it go and start getting back more towards the markets because I think that's where the real focus is going to be over the next few weeks. I agree with that. And I think what's happened with the equity markets and with the precious metals markets over the last couple of days has created a lot of opportunities for short sellers of stocks and for people who are still looking to put money to work in the precious metal sector. Yep. Long buyers of uh, gold and silver. Now's the time. All right. Well, let's dive in. Head first. Well, I think that also a big part of it is is that that's what the oligarchs wanted. I mean, they they painted See, the I, picture. Yeah, and I don't I don't buy into that theory because you know, again, you know, you know, yeah. I mean, I'd like to think that's what it is, but I I don't I don't you know. To me, it's conspiracy theory until proven otherwise. I mean, yeah, maybe I don't know. We don't know what they want. Do you know anyone who, who's on the inside that knows? Cliff High's not. Jim no. Rickards isn't. <laughs> None of us are. Greg Hunter isn't. I mean, do you know anyone who's on the inside that can really tell you what's going on amongst the, the, the real elitists? No. Right. So all we can do is speculate. And then it all runs rampant. You know, like there was speculation that Trump was going to ban gay marriage. Well, he made a, a, a definitive statement. He said, he said, the legality of gay marriage has been settled. Right. So that means he's, you know, whether or not he's personally against it, he's not going to try and reverse, you know, the decision that that gay marriage is OK, you know, but everyone out there was convinced he was going to stop gay marriage. So, you know, again, whether or not the oligarchs wanted Trump or Hillary, you know, who knows? To me, it's irrelevant. To me, everything ultimately boils down to economics. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think that the economic problems that we have are I mean, he's he's a good scapegoat for that. You know, he's an outsider. He doesn't yeah, know, what he's, know, he doesn't know what he's doing. And it's it's convenient for for the alternative media fear porn mongers to say, oh, they're going to put Trump in there and then collapse the markets. You know, well, there's also some data to show show that. Um, well, here, let's just get into it, because I, also, I really want to talk about the gold market and what's going on. Yeah, um, gold's getting hammered. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh the, the John Williams shadow government statistics in his latest report. And I think he actually predicted this based on the same data before the election. I just don't feel like going back and, and looking at it as his pre-election newsletters. But um, there's a statistic and um, going back to 1932 in any election year when the, when the real, disposable income of households when the growth rate of real disposable income is below 3.1 percent the incumbent party gets thrown out it's happened six times and this goes all the way back to 1932 in in 2016 the the real the growth in real disposable income for the american household was below 3.1 percent the incumbent party lost OK, second thing is and um, Zero Hedge had it posted and, and I, I'm not going to pull it up. It's, it's largely for memory. But um, the last three times that the that there's been a change in party in in the White House, the stock market has gotten annihilated. And I think we're on the cusp of the stock market getting annihilated. Yeah, we talked but unless about you that have the other day. more to talk about the election. The only thing, you know, again, I don't. It looks like based on what Trump's doing with his appointments and his advisors and his, you know, the, the cabinet, the cabinet um, 
appointments that are rumored to be happening, um, or the names at least that have been floated out, Giuliani, Jamie Dimon, uh, Steve Mnuchin. Um, it looks to me like it's it's out with the old and with the old. And and it looks like, you know, this this promise to drain the swamp. <laughs> I think he I think Trump's putting the plug back into that drain. Yes. You know, it's convenient to get votes. But yes. um, yeah, I mean, he, he all but said that that uh, in the uh, 60 Minutes interview last night that those were just talking points during the uh, <laughs> campaign. I mean, that's he didn't he didn't use those exact words, but he was, but that's pretty close to what he said. I mean, he's already right. So how is he any different than Hillary Clinton? Because Hillary Clinton said, "Well, there's a difference between what you say is your policy in public and what you privately believe your policy is." That was yeah, exactly. a paraphrase. You know, yeah. it's the same thing. It's out of the old and the old. Yep. I mean, for me, my conclusion is the only thing good about Trump being elected is that it's not Hillary. Right. Well, I think that it keeps us a, a little bit further away from uh, World War III and uh, everybody glowing uh, in the in the near future. Uh, I don't know that, that we're <laughs> going to uh, avoid it. I don't know that we'll be able to avoid it, you know, but I think that we have been able to delay it for a little bit, you know. I mean, I, I wrote a couple of pieces yesterday that – pointed out, you know, I mean, one of them is titled Globalist Agenda is Still in Play, and the other one is Trump, Trojan Horse Coming into Full View. And the uh, uh, Trojan Horse Coming into Full View goes over the these uh, contenders and possible contenders for his cabinet. I mean, and one that came in late, which was what prompted, the, prompted me to write the article, is a gentleman named Jose uh, Rodriguez. Jose Rodriguez is the person, and this guy is is a potential contender for director of the CIA. This is the person that that implemented waterboarding and and helped to uh, convince Cheney and Bush that you know torture is good. Torture is good for us. I mean, and, and the practices that he used are are the, are straight out of uh, World War II, out of what the Nazis. And the Japanese were using during World War II those torture treatments. So, I mean, it's you know, if this person is even being considered for uh, any type of position whatsoever, other than a position in a jail cell, then there's your answer as far as you know, Trump being out with the old, in with the old. I mean, yeah, and it may even be out with the old, in with with worse, new old, with worse, exactly. And that's yeah. the way I ended the article. Is is that it's not only out with the old, in with the old, it's in with the old on steroids. I mean, right. And, you know, we have precedents for this. Yep. I mean, think about how happy you were that, that the Bush administration was going to be gone forever. And you're thinking, you know, even if you didn't support Obama or you didn't trust Obama or you didn't like Obama, you still had to have some hope that, you know, whatever he did in D.C. couldn't have been couldn't have been as bad or worse than what Bush did. And to me, it was apparent within his first hundred days that his, the cabinet he put together was worse than what Bush had. And that's what we're seeing right now. And that's what we're seeing with Trump. You know, it was the same thing. I couldn't wait to get rid of Loretta Lynch and all these other people that Obama put in there thinking, you know, and I, I had hope that Trump was going to, you know, ma make some improvements on his appointments. And what, look what we're getting. We're getting even worse. So it's, worse. it's just a downhill spiral of this country. And it's the collapse is inevitable. And hopefully, as you bring up World War Three, hopefully that's not where it where it culminates. Well, hopefully not. I mean, like I said, I, I, don't, I really don't see. As, as we've discussed endlessly, Dave, it's it's about economics and that's where this whole conversation started and the dollar is on its way out the sdr the chinese the russians they're moving in to the currency market into under the global stage they already have the chinese have already done that they already have these two countries both have independently but but commingled their own completely um parallel monetary, financial, and economic systems that 
are not dependent upon the West at all, not in the, not in the least. They're no longer needed. And everything that, that these two countries are putting into place as far as the SCO, the uh, One Belt, One Road, the EEU, the BRICS, all of these things, the West is done. The dollar is done. It's just a matter of time. It's a dead man walking. I don't know when that, when it's going to change or how it's going to change. I just know that it is. I mean, that, and that's what it comes down to. And as you said many, many times, that these guys aren't going to go down without a fight, and they're not going to. I mean, and it's just that simple. They're not going to just hand over, just wake up one morning and go, well, that's cool. It was We had a nice <laughs> run, so... Well, you guys take over. We're good. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> or am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. That's what it is. Should we uh, turn to gold here? Let's do, because it's uh, it's two Sundays in a row. It's it's opened up and just went straight down. Well, again, it's 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 most it's it's all happening in the paper market. I mean, when they, yes. you know, when 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 I, I really don't even watch what goes on in the in the precious metals futures on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, because it's 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 by far the slowest trading period. What happens is is, is the CME's Globex computer system opens back up, and anyone who wants who has some sort of agenda. In, in the precious metals or in equity futures or oil futures, they go to town because there's no one around. I mean, Australia is not even open yet. So, um, what, you know, what happens is, I mean, last night when I, I mean, I went to bed at like, I don't know, early for me, like 1030 and gold was probably, probably down. I think it was trading below 1210. And I said to myself, you know what? Gold's going to be up one. Gold's going to be higher than this when I wake up. And lo and behold, it actually traded up to twelve twenty-five overnight. And when I woke up, it was at twelve twenty-one. So it had already rallied about eleven or twelve bucks. Um, so before I went to bed, I moved a little bit more money into Bitcoin, <laughs> and I moved a little bit more money into Bitcoin this morning. And you know, I'm I'm fine with them slamming the metals like this in short bursts because it allows me to reload positions, right? Um, and what I think is going on here, if, you know, if you think about what happened in the precious metals sector between January 1st and August 1st, you had a monster rally. I mean, the Huey was up 184 uh, percent. Gold was up, I think, 25 or 26 percent. Silver was up even more on a percentage base. I don't have the number off the top of my head. And so you could argue. and, and and just to be clear, in the absence of paper manipulation or the ability to manipulate gold and silver in the, using paper derivatives, gold would have kept going higher, silver would have kept going higher, the mining stocks would have kept going higher, and everything would be a lot higher anyway. However, having said that, what's happened is, is that they've got the hedge fund black box algos programmed to chase momentum. So when you, when you, you know, and, and these, these hedge fund computers have, you know, technical indicators for buying and selling programmed into their system. So when, when a market gets technically overbought, it's probably pretty easy to get it to sell off. And that's exactly what we've seen since, since early August is, is that, you know, I mean, think about it, any, any hedge fund that, if they had just bought the Huey index on January 1st and sold it on August 1st, they probably closed down for two years because <laughs> you got 184%, you know, and if you, if you amortize that over two years, you're still going to outperform any hedge fund out there <laughs> with those numbers. Yep. So, um, and, you know, even now with, with the massive smash that we've had, gold and silver are higher than they were at the beginning of the year. Uh, the Huey index still up 81% from its low in January. You know, those are great numbers. If 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 this S and P or the Dow or or even Amazon was throwing off numbers like that, you know, they'd be doing naked cartwheel wheels on CNBC. So, um, I think what happened is a lot of people who are the most discouraged are the ones who started chasing it at the end, who piled in in July. I mean, I was getting Mining Stock Journal subscribers 
email. You know, I had a couple ideas that were junior ideas that were up, you know, 600% in, in a very short period. And they'd be emailing me, where's the next one? You know, and I'd be like, oh boy, <laughs> we're at a short term top. <laughs> Yeah. But I think what happened is, 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 you know, everyone was making their predictions about what would it, what, what kind of effect the election would have on the precious metals. And, and Trump gets in there and the banks wanted to, and the central banks wanted to send us the message, Hey, we're still in control, you know? So, um, they went to town on, on, on the precious metals and that's what we're seeing. And it's all in the paper market. Yep. And it also happens to coincide with, um, what happened in India, as as you know, um, Modi, who is a he's just a pretty little lapdog for the Western elitists. Yes, he is. And nothing more. Uh, Modi got in there, and uh, last week he eliminated you know the high value Indian banknotes. Yep, made them illegal. Now there's a window there where people can exchange them out, etc. I don't think it's coincidental that he implemented that right about the same time that the the, the anti gold cartel went to work on the precious metals because I think it probably temporarily arrested precious metals demand in India, which was starting to go orbital. Makes sense. So you've had you've had that, and that that I think it took it took pressure off the the physical gold market and allowed them to to use, to, to create a more effective hit in the precious metals markets. And obviously they're, they're trying to send the message that, Hey, Trump's going to be good for everything. Look, the Dow's up, Dow's hitting all time highs and precious metals are going South. So what could be better than a Trump press presidency for the U S economy? Well, <laughs> um, Trump's going to be horrible for this economy, just like Hillary would have been just like anyone who got into that position would have been. Um, but what's interesting here is that, um, this latest hit, this latest smash, there's been an absence of something very conspicuous that we've seen in the last massive hits like this, okay. um, 2011. And that is, I haven't heard any reports of large, large uh, dumping of, you know, physical metal hitting the LBMA. So, for instance, in 2011, the first time they smashed silver, um, I think it was... 200 tons of gold hit the LBMA at once. And, and that's, that's their most powerful way to push the market lower. And I have not heard, and I don't know if you've heard any reports because you, you scour the internet a lot more thoroughly than I do. Um, but I've not heard any reports about any big precious, any big gold dumps going on in London. And so to me, that, that tells me that the nature of this takedown is going to be very temporary. No, and now that you mention it, I, that's that is absolutely missing. And you're right. I mean, I do spend an inordinate amount of time out looking for information, and that has been missing from everywhere. There's, it's not. I've not seen anything about that. That's that is that's very. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Because that that is that is quite different than what we've seen in the past. Yeah, and so and that's why I think that again, this this is really more of a it reflects desperation in that it's it's just been blatant you know blatant hit in the paper market. Like Friday, um, I mean, Zero Hedge reported ten billion dollars worth of paper gold um, hit the market, and and I didn't I didn't add it up over. Um, well, I guess I did actually, but the big, the big hit came at 1130 to noon Eastern standard time, 150 tons of paper gold were dumped on the COMEX. And that's, that's when, when the price was dropped from 1255 down to about 1225. Um, see, and still, add, then if you added it up, if you, if you went from 1130 East coast time to 130 East coast time, which is when the COMEX the gold futures close, the COMEX floor closes, a total of 321 tons was dropped. So you had a two hour period where 10.3 million ounces of paper gold, which that, that amount of gold exceeds the amount of gold on in COMEX vaults, total gold, you know, and, and 321 tons, the U S the United States produces about 200 tons a year. 
So that tells you how absurd and how uneconomical and how manipulated that hit was. Um, but it's paper, so it's going to clear out. And I think we're, I wouldn't be surprised. I told Bill Murphy um, this morning that I wouldn't be surprised to see gold and silver higher on Wednesday by Wednesday than it is now and headed higher and to see the Dow and the S&P lower on Wednesday than they are now and headed lower. It's in, what's interesting, though, Dave, is, is how little movement they have been able to achieve to the downside with their 321-ton dump of paper of uh, paper gold, in all honesty. I mean, the... the it, it's taking it's taking mountains more for smaller moves. They have to continually ramp up the uh, volume of paper that they throw at the market to get a much smaller move. I mean, think about it. I mean, and that it's. I mean, what what's it gonna what's it gonna get to? You know, a thousand a thousand tons to get a fifty dollar move. 5,000 tons to get a $100 move? I mean, wouldn't that be a signal to the entire world that, hey, something may be wrong here? Yeah, I, you know, you're right about that. Um, I mean, if you look at this, the big the big push took gold down about 30, 35 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I mean, typically in the past, when they've, when they've attacked the gold market like this, We've seen gold go down over a hundred bucks in one day. Well, not in a day, but you know, intraday, and then maybe close down, you know, fifty to eighty dollars. Um, and got a twenty-five to thirty dollar move. Yeah. So you're right, and that again, that's to me that underscores the fact that they didn't have physical gold to to throw at the market the way they have in the past. Right. So that's again, I think that. That speaks to what I believe will be the short-term nature of this hit. And you're supposed to use this as an opportunity to buy, which I've been doing. Load up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did too. I, I went out and picked up uh, one of the Teddy Roosevelt's over the weekend. I thought, well, now's as good, as good a time as any. So I got one of those ATB Teddies. That's right. And actually, this morning when I was looking at SD Bullion, they were selling any quantity of Silver Eagles, not the 2017s, but the 2016s, um, for all in 1904, not including, you know, if you use a credit card, there's a processing fee. Um, so um, I, I, haven't, I haven't bought any yet. But at, at some point today, I'm going to go in there and buy some more Silver Eagles. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to pick up some gold that's what i want i want gold more gold more gold well for and again like i said i've been moving money into bit gold i did on um saturday yesterday and this morning that's good that's real good well well do you have anything else no, I think that uh, I, th I think that we're good to go for now. Well, all right, Dave. Uh, I'll let you get back to your afternoon, and I guess we'll pick it up on Thursday and see where we stand. Afternoon? What do you mean? I still have two hours of morning left, bro. Don't don't try and shorten my day. <laughs> well, all right, bro. Have a good morning then, and uh... <laughs> I'm still trying to recover from Finding Nemo. My my significant other, Sid wanted me to watch Finding Nemo last night. So um, I'm still recovering from that. <laughs> Did you find Nemo? Nemo was found, not by me, but he was found. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, all right, Dave. Well, have a good morning, buddy, and I guess I'll talk to you on Thursday. Sounds good. You too.